today we're going to talk about what for many people would be the holy grail of Python programming, and that is getting your basic Python program converted into a fully functioning web app. Now, that's not easy to do for one, and it's typically a long and challenging process. So I'm going to try and go over my methods that can help you get from basically start to finish and hopefully not leave anything out. I'm going to try to be pretty thorough here, but I'm also going to try to go quickly so this doesn't take uh, three or four days of your time to get this done. So I'm going to start by going over some of the required software that you need to have before you can even get started. So the first thing is actually optional. It's PyCharm. It's the uh, software that I use to write Python code. It is awesome. It is powerful. It is great, great, great for this process. It will save you a lot of time and headaches. It's free as a trial and it's free if you have an academic uh, version. You can just type in your school email address and get a free trial for a year. I recommend it. You can use another development environment if you want. That's up to you. I'm going to be using PyCharm and you'll see why because it makes like Django development pretty much a breeze. So if I were you, I would go ahead and download this first and install it, the professional version. Come back when you have that done. The next thing is that we're going to be using, we're needing a database for a website and we're going to be using Postgres as our database application. Now, um, you can use others. There's like countless different database programs, but Postgres is free, it's fast, it's simple, and it's pretty much universally supported. So it's a great, great uh, database application to use, and it's probably the most common one that you're going to see referenced anyway, so you need to, to go ahead and learn it. So go here, download this, get it installed, and then come back when you have that finished. All right, we're also going to need Git uh, and GitHub. So Git is a version control platform. And for those that are not initiated, it is very confusing at first on how it works. I'm not going to go like super in-depth on Git. I'm going to talk about the commands that we need to get our site published. But uh, you will need this. So download the proper version for your operating system. And we're using Windows, by the way, for all of this, obviously. Uh, so if you're on Linux, uh, you could try to follow along. Some things might be different, but or Mac OS. But uh, we're using Windows, so go ahead and choose the version that works for you. Uh, I'm, I think, 64-bit on my computer. Uh, you could use 32-bit. It would be compatible with just about any system. So get that going. You're also going to need to go to GitHub and sign up for a free account and that'll be the repository where you store all of your sweet Python code and if you're not using this already you need to like just take a couple of days and get it set up and get your existing projects up there so it really kind of is the only way to go uh, to keep your code organized and to keep you from messing something up and not being able to figure out what you did uh, this is really a lifesaver and if you ever want to work professionally, you're going to have to know how to use Git anyway. So uh, install Git, get a free GitHub account. And then we're going to use Heroku to actually host and deploy our web application. So go to heroku.com, sign up for a free account. That's it. Okay. Come back when you're finished. And... Also, of course, we're going to need Python. Now, I'm assuming that if you're here, you already have Python installed, but just in case, I'm using Python 3.5.1. If you're watching this in the future, it could be 3. Point whatever, but we're using 3, not 2. Uh, you can use either one, but again, I'm using 3, so if you want to follow this step by step, uh, I would recommend that. And pretty much last but not least, we're going to be using Django. Uh, Django is the framework for 
uh, Python, and it essentially allows our Python code to more or less be converted into HTML so that a, we a web browser can read it. And you can't use Python on the web without a web framework. Django happens to be the biggest and arguably most popular, and that's what we're going to use just because I know how to use it. So uh, that's pretty much it. We're also going to cover a few of the packages with Python that you need. And I promise once we get through this part, we can get started with the good stuff. But uh, go ahead and get all these going. Pause the video now, uh, get all these going, and then come back uh, after all this is done. All right, assuming that you've either had these already installed or you've paused the video and you came back, we need to check that our Python install is working and install a few packages uh, as well. So just go to the command prompt. All right, so run the command prompt and type in Python, and you should see your Python version here. If you don't see that, something's horribly wrong. So I'm assuming that you know how to do this and you have Python going. Uh, so Control C, we'll, we'll close those out of that. And we need to install certain add-ons here. Uh, we're gonna start with uh, virtual environment. That's the most critical one. So you're gonna type in pip install virtual env, env, and you can see that I already have it. If you didn't, it's going to be showing a bunch of install scripts, and that's the first thing that you need to do. Now, what we're going to do, a little bit of a brief background on virtual environments, Python is self-contained in a sense that your Python folder, wherever you installed it, is kind of almost portable in a sense that you could copy and paste that folder somewhere else and have a completely separate Python installation. It's not like most app apps where there's files going into different directories and things like that. It's essentially a self-contained program which makes it very powerful. So uh, the reason that we would want to create additional copies of Python is that uh, when we start installing different modules, uh, to add functionality to our Python program. We may, some may not be compatible with certain apps that we're creating. Uh, we may want to create an environment with a different version of Python. Uh, but mainly, when we go to deploy our web application, the uh, Heroku, which is where we'll be hosting our site, will essentially install every Python package that you have installed on your Python, uh, your local Python uh, installation, it'll copy all those packages over, and that takes up a lot of resources, and you, don't, you only want it to install packages that are absolutely critical for your web app itself. So if you've been playing around with Python on your computer and you've installed like Matplot library, you've installed uh, all kinds of different other things, uh, pandas and uh, numpy and, and scipy and all these other different add-ons, those things take up a lot of space and resources and you don't need any of those probably to deploy your site, but uh, Heroku will attempt to install all of those anyway and you'll run out of room and it's just not a good way to do it. So what we do is we create a virtual environment and what that is, it's a way for us to create a standalone, separate install of Python that when we're creating our web app, we're only in using the things that we need. We're going to install only the packages that are required to get our web app going. And that way, when we go to deploy to Heroku, it only uh, copies up and installs the packages that we absolutely need. And so this is a step that you probably don't want to skip. So let me show you how that works. What you need to do is I'm just under my regular user here in Windows. And if I hit directory, I can see all like, you know, my documents and everything. I've created a directory called environments. And you can just do make directory environments. You can call it whatever you want. I'm calling it environments. 
And then I'm going to go to that directory and I'm going to type in virtual environment and I'm going to name the uh, new environment after the app that we're creating. Now I'm going to create a sort of like weather station that just displays some different weather uh, variables like wind speed or temperature or whatever we decide we want. And so I'm going to do that. So I'm going to call it uh, weather. That sounds good enough. So this command here will create a new Python installation under uh, the environments weather folder. And once this, it's installing pip, which we'll use later, and everything else. So now that that's done, when I hit directory, I see weather. And I can go into that directory. And there's a scripts. So if I go into scripts, you see Python and, and pip and everything else that you need all self-contained, which is super, super cool. So this Python install is separate from our main install. So anything that we mess with in here will not mess with our local main Python installation. There is one thing that you have to do. You have to activate the uh, virtual environment. And that's done from within this scripts folder. So once we're in here, we can just type activate. And you'll notice that now has weather in front of our prompt. We have entered the virtual environment. I know it sounds, sounds kind of scary, but once we have this in front, anything that we do Python related will be uh, operating out of this folder, not our main Python install. And so this gives us a chance to install the stuff that we need and test everything without fearing that we're going to be messing up our our local base Python install. And you can also type uh, deactivate and it bounces you out of that if you need to go back to your regular uh, usage. But again, we want to leave that active pretty much for the duration of this. So if you don't see this here, locate to your uh, scripts folder and type activate and you should be in. So. Let's go ahead and do pip install Django. So Django is going to be our framework. It's going to allow us to get our site on the internet. So that'd be the first thing that we install. And again, I have Django on my main Python install, but because we're in a virtual environment, it doesn't detect that because this is empty and it will install it again for us. So that's how you know it's working. If it tells you that that's already satisfied, there's probably an issue. You're probably not inside the virtual environment where you need to be. So we'll let this go. It should take just a few more seconds. Um, once that's done, we're going to install two more uh, packages. There you go. Let's install requests. This is the add-on that allows us to request data from APIs on the web, and we're going to be using uh, Weather Underground API. I've used that a lot in my other videos just because it's easy to use and you hopefully you're familiar with it. If not, it's, it don't worry, it's pretty straightforward. So let's do uh, pip install request. There you go. That would, that would help. Okay, that was quick. Now, there's one more thing that we need uh, there will be more. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but this is all I could think of right now. So, uh, but there's one more thing that we have to have, and that's called uh, PsychoPG. That's uh, kind of a crazy name, but uh, there you go. What this is, it's a wrapper that converts sort of Python-like code into SQL for us to be able to connect and write data and read data from Postgres. So this is actually a, uh, you see it's the most popular adapter to connect Python and Postgres. So we're using Postgres as our, as our database. We need a way to connect it. It's essentially a package containing a bunch of methods for interacting with the database. And um, that way we don't really have to worry about how we're going to get data in and out. This sort of simplifies it. The issue 
really is that this isn't natively supported in Windows. So we have to do a bit of a workaround. And if we were to uh, Google that, well, we wouldn't even find it. It's kind of tricky to get to. We can try it. So we want it for our specific version of Python, and we want it for Windows. And I believe this Stack Overflow article, yes, it links to where you can find them. And there's some guy out there that's compiling uh, these uh, binaries for Windows that allow us to use the, the software that we need. So this place, if you're using Python on Windows, especially 3.5, and you don't see the module or the package that you want, it might be here. This guy is coding them and are compiling them and it's Anyway, long story short, this is where you have to go to get it. So you're going to want to go to this website. And let's see. Probably easiest just to search for it. There you go. And this is, let's see, Python 3.5, 32-bit uh, Python. Okay, so this is the one that I'm going to use. And... I think, no, I'm going to use the 64, no, 32. I think I have 32-bit Python, so let's give it a shot. So we'll click on that, and there you go. So let's show this in the folder, and there it is. I'm going to drag it to my desktop, and this is the install file. So when you go into pip, and you type pip install whatever, this is what it's fetching and that's what it's installing. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go into the uh, Explorer here, Windows Explorer, go to my C drive, go to users, go to myself and go to my environments and go to weather. I'm just going to drag this over into it. Okay, so that is now in our weather folder. And if I just go back one level, I can see this install file. So now I should be able to do pip install. And then you don't have to type the whole thing. Just type the first few letters and hit tab. And there you go. Boom. Okay, so that worked. So uh, now <laughs> that's a bit of a workaround. Usually, you know, you'd like to just be able to type pip install and just type the, the name in. But again, this isn't. Uh, actively developed for for uh, 3.5 Python under Windows, so we had to go find it somewhere else. So this is the hardest part. At this point, uh, assuming that you've got uh, all of these things set up and installed like you're supposed to, and you've followed these steps, we're ready to get started. So I'll end the video here. When I come back, we will get started on actually developing everything out.